All right, all right. Helicopters are for pussies. Now, wait a minute. Dear, dearest Billum Billiard Brain, just writing to say how much a bitch you need to be to fly a helicopter. Oh, this guy's trying to get my goat. And you know what? I always take the fucking bait. So good on him. Uh, why don't you crash like a real man when your engine goes out instead of floating towards the ground like the fairy you are? I'm sure you fly helicopters because when you grip the cyclic control, it's the only time you have something with some power between your legs. <laughs> it takes no skill to fly a helicopter, and I'm sure my first flight would be smoother than your shiny head. Jesus Christ. That was nothing but net. I loved every second of that. All right, jokes aside, as an A&P mechanic, what is A&P? You work at a fucking grocery store? A&P, uh, aircraft, and uh, what else? What is an A&P mechanic? Look at you speaking the fucking jargon like, jargon like I know who you... Okay, A... Uh, what's the and's fucking signal here? A and P... Yeah, grocery store mechanic. I guess I had to write what is. What is an A and P? I know a person works on planes and helicopters. An aircraft maintenance technician refers to an individual who holds an airframe and or power plant. Oh, airframe and power plant mechanic. Well, aren't you a fucking badass? Jesus Christ, you know, those guys down Midas Muffler, they don't give a fuck. If that weld fails, you're just going to drag the fucking exhaust pipe down the street. They don't get, nobody's going to die. You know, you're going to give some people some show, a show with the sparks, but this takes balls to do that, huh? At what point do they feel you're like good enough? Do they make you work on little fucking, uh, what are they called, drones? You know, they have you put those fucking things together and then they put a little rat or a fucking rabbit on it. If you don't kill the rodent, eventually you can work your way up to people. Um, what? By the way, any A&P mechanics out there, what is the rigorous testing? Or do I not want to know? All right, jokes aside, as an A&P mechanic, I love it when you talk aviation. Please keep it up, even if it's about those mind-numbing FAA tests that I know all too well. Uh, wish wish you the best. Just kidding. Fuck you. <laughs> the Pats and the Celtics. Fuck you, the Pats and the Celtics. Jesus. Sincerely, a self-loathing Atlanta sports fan. Um, all right. Well, I'm glad you enjoy that. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. My whole time driving back, I was like picking out airports, trying to figure out where they were. Um, from the highway and all of that type of stuff. I was trying to find Brackett. I actually looked the other way. It's weird. I forgot that I always fly along the 210 and come in usually. And I was on the 10 and I looked to the left, headed west. I should have looked to the right. I wouldn't have been able to see it, but it's just, I don't know. It's just another perspective. Probably helped me out at some point. Ah, God damn it. So, oh, wait, wait, what? What the fuck happened? Holy shit! What happened? God knows on that. I won't be able to fucking rewind this thing. Oh, I'm sorry. People watching this game is like, Burr's going to fucking flip out, and I didn't. How the fuck did it become 110, 111? 111, 110. Did we go to the line? Did we hit a three pointer? Who was it? Who was it? All right, I'm rewinding. I'm rewinding. Oh, was that when Tatum drove in? He goes in again. Again. I saw him play at Duke. Did you look at that? Splits the fucking defenders. Goes right in. Oh, my God. That guy is almost as good as I was back in the day on a Nerf hoop. That's what these fucking NBA guys do. They, they do shit on like a real thing. You know, you can't even do it on a fucking Nerf hoop. Celtics win. Beautiful. I love it. Sorry, guys. I, I, I At some point, I had to fucking focus on the podcast because most of the people listening to this could give a shit about all of this crap that I'm talking about. Um, all right. Yeah, you know what's My dream is someday to fly like one of those MD-600s or whatever, uh, which are basically, you know, 
they used to call, be called the Hughes, Hughes 500. I think that's what, what TC or somebody had on Magnum PI, whatever that character's name was. And uh, I always just thought it was the coolest looking fucking helicopter. And um, since then, they were bought, as all corporations get bought out by McDonnell Douglas or whatever the fuck they are. So now it's the MD 600. They got the one with the NOTAR system and all of that shit. But recently, a buddy of mine knows a guy who knows a guy that just got one. And he's trying to see if uh, eventually, you know, I could fucking go up with them and fly it. That would be incredible. Fucking incredible. I heard it's like, I, I got a buddy of mine, one of the guys that trained me. Um, he flies one every day. Um, I forget what state he's in now, but he was saying it's almost like cheating. It's so stable how easy it is to hover. So I'm dying to see what that's like. All right. My dad is, oh, my dad is an actor, is an actor you gave a shout out to. Get out of here. Okay. Hey, Bill, recently I went down a YouTube rabbit hole, which led me to watching actors talk about their most iconic roles. While watching Tim Roth talk about his role in Reservoir Dogs, I noticed they show a clip of the scene that my dad acted in. Wait a minute, dude. Is he, is he the, the cop? I said, buddy, I am going to shoot you in the face. You don't put your fucking hands down. Uh, having never searched for that scene on YouTube before, I was curious to watch it again and read what people thought of it. It was cool to see that a lot of people thought my dad was funny and played a realistic cop. Dude, that guy was fucking great. He was fucking great. Um, I also noticed that most of the comments stated that Bill Burr brought them here. After finding out what they were referring to, I listened to the podcast uh, from a few years ago where you gave my dad Rich Turner... Rich, shout out to Rich Turner crushing that scene. A shout out for his role and his line. Buddy, I'm going to shoot you in the face if you don't put your hands on that fucking, oh, fucking dash. I said, buddy, I'm going to I'm gonna try to do it justice. I said, buddy, I am going to shoot you in the face if you don't put your hands on that fucking dash. <laughs> um, I shared that part of the podcast with my dad. And his response was, who the hell is Bill Burr? Oh, that's great. Um, the only TV he watches is old westerns like Gunsmoke. Oh, I relate to that guy. Uh, I said he's a comedian. Fucking hilarious. He said that he had never heard of you, but uh, we're automatically his new favorite comedian. That was about a week ago. Since then, uh, he has watched a few of your Netflix specials. And thinks you're great. Just thought I'd share that. Dude, that's so fucking cool. Shout out to Rich Turner crushing that scene. What I loved about that was I was, I was picturing the audition. Um, for those of you who aren't in the acting game, it's just words. It just says, buddy, I'm going to shoot you in the face if you don't put your hands on that fucking dash. Like a lot of people probably read it. At, so I said, buddy, I'm going to shoot you in the fucking face. You don't put your hands in the fucking dash. Just yell through the whole thing. The way that he did that. And like, I don't know why. It's like, I've, I've met that cop before. It was a, the cadence of it was like a specific cop. You know, I'd been to enough parties that had been broken up by cops and shit went to enough sporting events and watched cops have to drag fucking drunks like me back in the day out of the game and there was a certain i don't know there's something about that cadence where he was doing a real guy that's what i loved about it um and to have a role that size in a in, in a movie that big and still stand out um like i mean that's that's i mean that's what that's what the fuck it's all about Incredible actor. Tip of the cap. All right. Full of shit media. Uh, hey, Billy Bleach Boy. I've been reading threads of tweets going around from a year ago before the lockdown started. It shows how conservatives were concerned about the numbers of possible deaths. Some even noted hospital crowding. The liberal media was saying it will pass right through and everyone will be OK. Oh, God. Guys, we got to stop doing this. Can we just admit we're all in the same fucking thing? I imagine there was liberals saying that. I imagine there was conservatives saying that. I imagine there was liberals and conservatives saying, no, this is a real thing. 
to just keep fucking pointing across the aisle. We're just going to be yelling at each other. Oh, God. I feel like this country is in divorce court and the judge is never going to make a fucking decision. Just fucking pointing at each other. Anyway, when lockdown started, the script was flipped. It was so easy for the media to make red state people, anti-maskers and liberals uh, pro shutdown. All right, you lost me there. It was so easy for the media to make red state people, anti-mask, and, oh, and liberals pro shutdown. Everyone is so gullible. Yeah, including you. Why did the narrative change when the lockdown started? Oh, oh God. Uh, tell me there, inter- internet scientist. The common sense is to keep shit open and, and to enforce masks in stores. Why? Okay. No argument against this solution has ever made sense. Wait. Everyone is so gullible. Oh, except you. You're the smart one. Well, uh, you know what? I'll be open-minded. You explained it. You, you figured it out. All right. All right. Why did the narrative change when the lockdown started? I followed you up to there. The common sense answer is to keep shit open and to enforce masks in stores. Well, if the narrative changed, then liberals would have been saying that it was going to be a big deal. So why would they say keep shit open? Well, I thought liberals were saying shut shit down. I don't know, dude. Anyway, no argument against this solution has ever, has ever made sense to me. Maybe it's I'm sick of seeing fellow brown people. I'm half black, half Persian, because I'm sure you're wondering. I actually wasn't. Um, maybe it's I'm sick of seeing fellow brown people doing delivery jobs and working grocery stores while my white college friends can simply work from home. It's so fucked up. I live in a nice looking low income neighborhood outside of a major city and it looks visibly worse since this all started. And I don't care if people fuck that up. My cousin's shop shut down after the city said they needed to be stricter because people weren't wearing masks. That shit wasn't my cousin's fault. No one fucked around in there at all, but he had to shut down. Uh, so if we're into punishing people because others can't be smart, then we're punishing innocent people. You talk about this shit all the time. Yeah, but also you're talking about you're literally trying to herd cats here. And in the United States, you're trying to herd, you know, upwards of half a billion people, all of whom are on the Internet, all of whom think they have the right answer. And I always go to if you can tell me if an egg is good for you or bad for you, then you have conquered the fucking internet because there is, or if red meat's good or bad for you, or if if that fucking impossible burger is actually a good thing or a bad thing, if you can sift through all of that shit and fuck is, I, I, how do you how do you do it? Is my question. Um, and yeah, if your if your cousin was, if, did you say it was your cousin or your brother? Uh, your cousin, if he was doing the right thing, he absolutely got punished. Because of these fucking idiots. But like. The blame. fall It falls on all of us. Blue tie. Red tie. Media. Government. And regular people. All right. It falls on all of us. Because. We're all human. So everybody's trying to do what they think is the right thing to fucking do. I just do know in the end. It's, it's it, to sit there and like. Um say that this thing is fucked up because of this political group or this thing or that thing is just, it's not, I don't agree with that. I'll put it that way. I don't agree with that. Okay. But people who walk around and don't wear masks are fucking morons. And not because I say, say so, because I've talked to doctors and nurses, you know, I went in, I got my heart checked out. It's fucking Cedars, one of the best fucking hospitals. And they were all beside themselves going, I don't know what people are doing. I, I just, if they just wear a fucking mask, they'd be fine. Um, but instead I'm supposed to listen to an expert who doesn't work at Cedars, <laughs> but has a YouTube channel. I don't know. Um, anyway, they have no connection to the problems they're screaming solutions for. Um, and I'm not saying everybody who's like fucking the other way is not necessarily a doctor, but like, there's also, you know, the same way there's bad comedians, there's also bad doctors, but you don't get that gig. If you're a fuck up and you're a lunatic, 
who has a medical degree. Yeah, I don't. I, I want to hear something from a mainstream. I don't even want to talk about it. Just, I'm sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. But I'm going to read the rest of this here. Uh, they have no connection to the problems they're screaming solutions for. My neighborhood doesn't need to be told what to do by Governor Fuckface Gavin. Uh, he nor anyone else I've heard behind a podium address any of the real issues going on. They are addressing real issues. People are dying. They just don't have the solutions. Okay? And he is a convenient guy to shit on because he's the governor. Okay? And he has fucked up from what I've heard. I don't know. But, like, to turn a blind eye to all these selfish fucking cunts. Oh, my God. I can't wear him. He's such a pain in the ass. I fucking hate him. You know, it's, it's also that. It isn't just Governor Fuckface Gavin. It's also some fuckhead like that fat fuck the other week just walking down the middle of the street who was totally fine that if I didn't move, he wasn't going to move, and then I'm fucking breathing whatever the fuck is inside of him, and he doesn't give a fuck. The same way he doesn't give a fuck if anybody in the house he lives in gets the last sleeve of cookies because he's obviously eating them. Anyways, my original post... Point, Bill, is no one has an original point. Uh, this isn't done out of care or principles. It's done out of inhumane group think. Love you and the podcast. Love you and thanks for the podcast. All right, you kind of long. This isn't done out of care or principles. It's done out of inhumane group think. Th- group thinking, you mean? Um. Well, I mean, I I also think, you know, we haven't faced anything like this in my entire fucking life. And how shit works is they wait till shit happens. You know, if you look at fucking 9-11 and all of that shit, they waited until it happened, until they got the level of security that they needed to prevent something like that from happening. Because money is not spent to prevent shit. Money is spent to solve shit. They don't want to fucking do all that. That's why they'll fucking, they'll let design flaws be out there and they just wait until people die and then they fix it. Because, I don't know, the slaves to money, I have no idea. It's all, out, it's all above my pay grade. But I respect your opinions and I hope your cousin's shop opens again soon. And I hope uh, Governor Fuckface gets a little more informed and I think the average fucking idiot walking around out there with no medical degree, you know, who seeks out crazy fucking people that agree with their opinion so they can feel justified with being a selfish cunt, fucking wake up at some point. But I don't think they're going to. So, um, so here we sit. All right. Opinion. Hospital photos of newborn and family. Hey, Father Freckles, just wanted to start out by saying thank you for your commentary about being a father. I became a dad a little more than a year ago, and your insight helps me remember to enjoy the little moments and be a better father. Oh, yeah. If you saw the excitement on my daughter's face when she learned how to whistle. Oh, you know, last week she got the balance bike thing down. Um, It's amazing, and it gives them confidence, and you just tell them how proud you are of them, and then they want to learn more stuff, and they go into it more confidently. Um. It's awesome. Anyway, he says, anyway, I have been thinking about the experience of my wife, the experience my wife and I had in the hospital after our daughter was born, thankfully pre-COVID. I got to tell you, I had a kid during COVID and it was never safer because they, they, pregnant women had their own entrance. Um, with our first kid, you know, anybody could f- come fucking walking through the door. So it's actually, it's not as bad. Um, okay, we were in our room when this young lady who works for the hospital comes in, walking in with a camera, saying it's time for us to take some family pictures. When we asked about what happens with the pictures, she said we would have the option of purchasing digital photos and or hard copies. Oh, dude, I would have been like, no, don't you not take my fucking picture. Get out of here. Uh, so after taking the pictures, she stepped away for a couple minutes. My wife and I talked about it and decided not to spend the money because we took quite a few pictures on our phones and thought that it would be enough. But when the lady came back, she showed us the photos in a slideshow on a laptop with some twinkling-ass piano music behind it. My wife and I completely fell for it, just bawling at the cuteness, and we ended up (laughs) paying the 100 plus for the 12 digital file. Oh, the hospital's got a new hustle. Uh, On one hand, it seemed like this service is a nice way for flustered new parents to get some nice photos to remember the day. 
but it bothers me that it also feels like this lady played that slideshow only to make us vulnerable so we'd be easily coaxed into buying. Dude, that is fucking hilarious. I swear to God, in another life, I would get into the corporate world just because I want to be in, I just want to be in one of those meetings. Like, how does that go down? How can we squeeze another hundred dollars out of these people? Well, what if what if we uh, we you know the other the other day I went to uh, a water park and they had this thing where you could take pictures after well, they took pictures of you on the ride and then afterwards you could purchase them and a lot of people purchased. I like that idea. Where are you going with this? Well, you know we could take pictures of them in the uh, the hospital room. You know when they when they're in the room and and uh, and then what? Show them on the camera. Well, yeah, I mean, that's... Susan, what do you say? What if we played sad piano music? (laughs) I don't know. Um, Prank gone wrong. Prank gone wrong. Hey, you guys, you want to just forget the whole fucking mask shit? I'm sick of talking about it, and I'm not making any of you who don't want to wear them wear them. So why don't we just stop? Let's just be friends again. Can we do that? All right, prank gone wrong. You know what? I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not fucking talking about that shit. I will make fun of people, but I'm not, I'm not going to get involved in this shit anymore. All right. Prank gone wrong. Hey, Billy Meister. Uh, find myself in a little predicament here. Me and my wife work out regularly. She started stealing my pre-workout powder. And I always insist she buy her own because mine is a little intense and expensive. What the fuck is wor- pre-workout powder? Oh my god! I always look up this shit you guys talk about, and then I get I get ads for them for like the next six years. Pre workout powder. Oh, like you drink like a drink. Oh, I was picturing you like you know like those weightlifters like LeBron James. You clap your hands. I'm like, which fucking weight is this guy putting up? Um. Okay. I I would always insist she buy her own because mine is a little intense and expensive. Yeah, Jesus Christ, she's going to fucking grow chest hair over there. Of course, she didn't buy her own and continued stealing my pre-workout. So here is the prank. I filled an empty pre-workout container with Kool-Aid, and she's been taking it for about two weeks. We have a beach trip coming up and fears she will be will overreact when I tell her she's been taking sugar-enriched Kool-Aid. How can I break the news to her so I don't get killed? Love the podcast and go fuck yourself. Wait, how long have you been doing this? Uh, it all depends on how how good a sense of humor she has. This is how you fucked up, is you let her do it for a week. Of course she didn't buy her own. I filled it a da 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 She's been taking it for two weeks. And you're getting ready to go to the beach. One of the places... Where a woman fills the most. I mean, everybody does. But, you know, I know women. They, they, the way they feel it is way more intense. Um, so, yeah, dude. Um, you, have two, you have three options here. You tell her. And she gets mad. Uh, you don't tell her. And you laugh about it to yourself. The thing about it is, is you came up with a great, a great way to tell her she needs to get her own workout powder, but then you just let her do it for two fucking weeks. Then that's when it became weird that you kept doing it. But I got to tell you, it's fucking funny that she's been drinking Kool-Aid. Um, but also you're kind of having her take ingests shit into her body that she doesn't want to take. I know it's just Kool-Aid, but now the way the world is, that'll be some sort of stomach rape at some point. (laughs) He drugged her with Kool-Aid and sugar. Um, What would I do here? Dude, why did you wait two weeks? All right, this is what I would do. I wouldn't tell her. I just say, fuck it. And, uh, 
You don't want to keep drinking Kool-Aid. Just say you accidentally knocked it over. You spilled it on the floor and you had to vacuum it up when she's not around. So now the Kool-Aid's gone. Okay? And then she'll go out and she'll buy her own goddamn thing. And then you're done. Okay? So this would just be a joke. You waited too long, dude. You waited too long. Um, I think you need to read a... Go buy a book uh, called How to Fucking Do a Kool-Aid Prank. Because you, you went too far. It's funny that you did that. Uh, and if you just did it one day and you just came home, how'd you feel? You feel good about the workout? Just laugh. Uh, remember I told you to buy the powder and you didn't? Well, I replaced it with Kool-Aid this morning. You drank Kool-Aid. And you know what? She'd still be fucking mad, but she wouldn't be as mad. The fact that you did it for two weeks, is it, it's a little fucking weird, dude. You did it for you did it for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say shit. I wouldn't say shit, and I just act like I spilt it. And then what I would do is I would um, I buy some replacement powder for yourself, and I would hide it. Why do you have to fucking hide it? You know what I mean? I don't. It's just you know I don't know. I gotta tell you, dude, you stumped me. You stumped me. This this something you waited too fucking long. You had the perfect little fucking thing, and you could have laughed at her. And then when she got mad, you could be like, listen, I told you to get your own, your own fucking powder. You know, you know how they are. Well, if you love me, you'd fucking blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Um, yeah, I wouldn't tell her. I wouldn't tell her. But I would keep putting my foot down that she can't use your powder. Tell her to get her own fucking powder before she has hairy tits. Oh, that's what that's what you should have done. Well, you know what? Just to let you know, this thing is overloaded in testosterone, and uh, let's just say you might need a fucking weed whacker to fucking, you know, get rid of your back hair. You know, or she could just respect you. All right, this is going off the rails here. Okay, um, Brad Stevens looks hilarious with the fucking mask on. I'm watching the post the post game here. Um, all right. That's the podcast, everybody. God bless you. And uh, go fuck yourselves. And I will check in on you on Thursday. Go Celtics. Go Bruins. Go fuck yourselves.